for Roberto to give green light. Shall we start? Yeah. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Uh, I am very grateful to God for the time we have been together in the past and this trip. And I pray for guidance and assistance for this presentation and for the rest of the program. And thank you very much to Piero for this very informative and enlightening presentation. The issue of Holy Spirit is a very important issue and very dear to me. And I always felt that we need to work more on understanding Holy Spirit. Many years ago, maybe about 18 years ago, I asked one of our master students to do his dissertation on Robert for the Holy Spirit. And then some years later, another person. Because I think uh, it's uh, something very difficult to understand, something very sophisticated, uh, but at the same time, something which is very relevant to us. Uh, the Quran says, sure. thank you. Is it better? Yes. yes. The Quran says, yes, alunaka an Surat Isra, Isra, Surat Isra, verse 85. Wa yas'alunaka anil ruh, qulil ruhu min amra rabbi, wa ma utitum min al-ilm illa qadim. They ask you about ruh. Ruh means a spirit. So this was a question, even at that time, what is the spirit. It doesn't specify, did they mean human spirit? Did they mean holy spirit? Did they mean everything? It says, they ask you about the spirit. Tell them, the spirit is from my Lord's command or affair. Amr in Arabic can mean command or affair. The plural forms are different. So if it is command, it becomes awamr. If it is affair, it becomes umur. So from plural, we can understand. But the singular is difficult. But we have evidence to understand that here means command. Because the Quran says, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ God's command or affair is command. Even if it is affair of God, it's through command. When he wants something to be there, he says, be, and then there it is. Muslim philosophers have tried to distinguish between two types of creatures of God, like Mullah Sabra, uh, the founder of transcendent philosophy. He says, we have two types of creatures. One type of creatures are <coughs> created just by command of God. And these are immaterial. These are spiritual creatures, like angels. Angels are created without waiting for any preparation, any, any conditions to be fulfilled. And therefore, they are eternal. But in this material world, God would not command to be unless at certain time, certain space, when certain conditions are there. Therefore, we have 
the world of Khalq and the world of Ami. Nahul Khalq wal Ami. So these philosophers say we have two realms in the universe. One is immaterials, higher realm, and only God says be and then they are there forever. But in the material realm, there must be some condition. For example, for a child, there must be father, mother, many things have to come together, and then the child is born. And of course, at certain point, when God wants to give the spirit, again he would say be. But this be is preceded by many other things. So, the spirit is something which is coming directly and solely from the command of God. So it's not material, it's not worldly. Okay? And what is also interesting is that Jesus, unlike you know, normal, ordinary human beings, Jesus is also a command of God. We are not a command of God unless certain things are prepared for us. But for Jesus, he's a command of God, and therefore even without Father, Jesus is, you know, created. So it's very different. Therefore, we have this concept that Jesus is a spirit. Jesus is Ruh. Which, you know, in Muslim world, you say Ruh Allah, the spirit of God. Yeah. So, our knowledge about the spirit is very limited, but still philosophers, mystics, exegetes of the Quran, they have tried to, you know, develop, and lots of things they have put together, but they don't agree necessarily. So sometimes there are differences in opinions. What I thought might be good to share with you is first, I mentioned something about function of, functions of Holy Spirit. And then I will try to reflect on some verses of the Quran and see whether we can understand what is the nature of the Holy Spirit. So this would be the second part. About functions, there is more agreement about functions of the Holy Spirit. But about the nature of Holy Spirit, there are differences. Something that we find about the Holy Spirit, which is mentioned in the Quran, is that Holy Spirit supported Jesus and supported our Prophet. So there are four verses in which Ruh al Qudus is mentioned in the Quran. We have many verses that a spirit is mentioned, but Ruh al Qudus, this phrase, is only mentioned four times. So I, I'm going to uh, share these four verses. One is Surah Baqarah, verse 87. This verse first talks about Moses and then says that after Moses there were other messengers, then focuses on Jesus. We gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear proofs, manifest signs. We supported him, Ta'yid, in Arabic comes from Yad. Yad means hand. Ayyada yu ayyadu means to give hand, to support, to strengthen. So God says, we supported Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Although we believe other prophets were also supported. But there must be something special about Jesus. Because when God is talking about prophets, when it comes to Jesus, it says, 
And it's not only one verse. So there are three verses out of four which talk about Jesus at global borders. The next verse is Surah Ma'idah verse 110. The whole verse is God's address to Jesus. When God said to Jesus, the son of Mary, remember my blessing upon you and your mother. When I supported you with the Holy Spirit, you speak to people as an infant, as a baby, when you are in the cradle, you speak to people. So it was God's support through Holy Spirit that Jesus as a newborn baby was able to speak. But it was not the only time. And this is continuing when you become old. And here there is an interpretation because Jesus, before becoming old, was raised, because we believe Jesus was raised. Mm -hmm. So they say it refers to the time that Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. And he would be, you know, old in age, but not necessarily in body. And even at that time, he is going again to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And it's a sign that God has kept him so long that still he's able to communicate to people the will of God. As a child, he said, Enni Abdullah atani al kitab and then even later he would speak. I taught you the book and wisdom and Torah and gospel. And you create from the clay the statue of a bird and you blow into this clay and becomes a bird with the blessing of God and leave of God and then other miracles of Jesus so he was supported with Ruhul Qudus again the same word only the difference is the person you know because in arabic we have you know male female one dual plural but the same verb ayadnahu or ayatuka then we have another case uh, so uh, let me go to the fourth case. So three cases about Jesus. The fourth case, if we go to Surah al 102. Did you? Tell that the Holy Spirit brought it down to you, and brought it, bringing down the Quran to you from your board, truthfully, so that he would make the believers firm and strong, and as a guidance and good news for those who submit to God. So this is the third case, and the fourth case, Baqarah 253. So we have two cases in Surah Baqarah. Again, this is about Jesus. So four cases of Holy Spirit, three about Jesus. Baqarah 253. God says that there are different messengers. Some were higher in rank than others. Some we talked to, referring to Moses. Moses is given the title of Chalimullah. He was spoken by God. And 
So we raised some of them higher, and then he talks about Jesus. So perhaps this means that Jesus is one of those who are higher in rank among the messengers. Atayna isabna Maryam al very similar to verse 87 of the same chapter. We supported Jesus with the Holy Spirit. So, four cases, Ruhul Qudus is mentioned, three are about Jesus. One is about Holy Spirit bringing the Quran to the Prophet. We have other cases which we have a spirit, I will mention later in the second part of my discussion. But these are the only cases that the whole name is mentioned. As much as we can understand from these verses is that a very important function of the Holy Spirit is to support messengers, prophets, and to help believers, especially in the form of guidance. But then we refer to the Islamic traditions, we find that the Holy Spirit is a source of inspirations, a source of guidance, a source of help, and even sometimes intercession in the hereafter. So, in order to understand the significance of inspirations and guidance in this form, uh, we need to have a you know, whole discussion about inspirations. But basically what we can understand is that human beings, in addition to their reason or intellect and their conscience and their fitra, which is God-given uh, nature that they have, which come with certain understanding and certain desires, they are able to receive sometimes some direct inspirations. These inspirations are not result of my thinking, because God can guide me in my study, God can guide me in my thinking, yeah? But inspiration is something which comes all together and many times you cannot expect yeah no one can say for example whenever I want I receive inspiration yeah is a gift and this gift can be given anytime that God you know finds it appropriate and many times you may not have any clue about it therefore it's a gift which is many times surprising, yeah? If you are doing your research and you come to some conclusion as a result of your study, it's expected that, okay, this was, you know, the tenth step, you know, I had one, two, three, this was the tenth step. But inspirations normally come with surprise and they are unexpected and they bring a new way of looking at things, a new horizon. Opposite to inspirations, we have also uh, communication of Satan's, which we call them temptations. So we receive also, unfortunately, sometimes also suggestions from Satan's. Uh, in Islamic tradition, we can say that Satan and his allies have no control over us. So sometimes I say in my lectures, they don't have our remote control. <laughs> but we can give our control to them. That's an, another thing. But what Satan can do is able to put ideas into our mind. Mm. Satan has a way of communicating to us in the form of temptation doesn't need to send a letter to me or you know ask someone to talk to me god has given them this ability that they can just call us 
there is a verse in the Quran that on the day of judgment when people blame Satan, say, you know, you have misguided us. Satan says, La talumuni. Walumu and fusakum. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I didn't have any control over you. I just called you. You've listened. <laughs> you should not have listened to me. Yeah? I didn't have any power, any control over you. So, the Quran says, Satan's also communicate to each other. And they also bring temptations to us. If we subscribe, then we will regularly receive these temptations. <laughs> and then we can say, okay, you are a good you know, person. Now you can also work for us. Spread this among other people. Then we call it shayateen al ends. These are human beings who have become satanic. So those in temptations can come. But God does not leave us alone. First of all, he says, you have control over your heart. No one can enter your heart unless you want. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I have inspirations for you. Mm -hmm. I make angels support you and help you. But in addition to the angels, then we have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When Holy Spirit comes, it's inspiration with strengths. Sometimes we receive ideas, nice ideas, good ideas, but maybe I feel weak. Yeah? I feel I'm not able to carry out. Therefore, I may ignore it. But if Holy Spirit comes, brings inspiration and power together, this is ta'id. And therefore, you become empowered and you may even be able to do miracles as Jesus you know, did miracles with the help of Holy Spirit. It depends how much you establish you know, unity with the Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit is always with you, then you can do miracles. If it's one of, you can do wonders. For example, what we have in some of our hadiths. There was a poet in the time of the Prophet called Hassan ibn Sabit. He was a pagan, then he embraced faith. <clears throat> and he made a very good poem in support of faith. And the Prophet said, Holy Spirit helped you. This was not your own you know, initiative. As a poet, he made lots of poems before, but the Prophet said, <coughs> this was brought to you by Holy Spirit. We have another case uh, in the time of, you know, our, I think it was eighth Imam, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Abel Khuzai, another poet, said something, very nice poem, and Imam said, this was brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Or we have, a theologian, there was a theologian called Hisham ibn Hakam. For the very first time in a discussion, he made an argument about the need for having Imam, a divinely appointed leader. And Imam said, this was brought to you by all the spirit. So the Holy Spirit can bring a new idea, a new argument, a new point of wisdom to a poet, to a theologian, to a believer. But if you make friendship, if you make long-term relation with Holy Spirit like Jesus, then it will be another level. Then you can do miracles. You can give life to the dead. You can you know, give life to the bird and bird will fly and things like this. So we have different ways of support coming from God, one way is inspirations, and one type of inspirations are through the Holy Spirit. If I receive inspiration directly, it's risky. 
because sometimes I'm not able to understand. This is inspiration, this is imagination, this is illusion, this is confusion. I have to check it, first of all. And second, it's just an idea, inspiration. But if it comes with the Holy Spirit, then it is trusted. Yeah? Sometimes you receive something, you know, through post. And say maybe someone in the middle has, you know, interfered, changed, you know, whatever. But someone, they send an envoy and they deliver with hands to you. So you are here very much, you know, assured that this is authentic. So we can always receive inspirations from God, but we can make these inspirations more regular more trusted, clearer, if we have certain qualities. One of the qualities that help a lot in receiving, but then expansion and, you know, enriching these inspirations is piety. It's purity. So if I have taqwa, if I have piety and purity, if my intentions are sincere, my heart is you know, clear, then my inspirations would become more often and more you know, clearer. But my taqwa has a limit. My piety, my purity has a limit. Okay? But when the Holy Spirit comes, means I am connected to, to the spirit of sanctity. Because Ruh al means the spirit of holiness. So it's like a person who is connected to a college of scholars. Imagine. You know, one, some time one person is researching. Sometimes God, suppose, has a storage of all a scholars, you know, brain and experience and wisdom and connect you to that. This would be different experience. Mm. So with my piety, I can receive something, but depending on how much I am pious, etc. But if I am supported with the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of sanctity and sacredness and holiness, then it's not my level of piety that determine what I'm going to receive, yeah? Because I am connected to a great source. Maybe you say, but always, this is a very important point. You may say always, you know, God has unlimited treasures and you can receive as much as you have capacity, yeah? Even the Holy Spirit cannot do, you know, something impossible because at the end of the day, it's you. I accept that, but I say there's a difference between me getting something from treasures of God and having someone who is interceding or someone who is, you know, acting as a medium. Sometimes I can go to a library and based on my capacity benefit, sometimes I can be supported with a scholar who knows this library. Again, it's my capacity, but with this person, my capacity increases. So when the Holy Spirit comes, my capacity increases because now I have a great support. So with having the Holy Spirit with us is not only my limited piety or, I don't know, uh, receptivity. It's supported, it's strengthened, it's, uh, you know, amplified with having the Holy Spirit. So, these are things that we can find easily uh, about, you know, inspiration, supporting the prophets, believers, etc. from the Hadith and the Quran. But what is more difficult is to understand the nature of the Holy Spirit. The first part, I hope it's clear and hopefully people would accept what I said, although I made some new points, but I don't think it would be, you know, 
unorthodox. <laughs> but <laughs> the second part, people have different ideas. So let us first introduce ourselves with some occurrences of a spirit in the Quran and make a contrast between the spirit and angels and then share with you my thoughts. If we, for example, can go to the verse uh, 70 of Surah Sa. Seventy-two. Yes, we have some verses very similar, and uh, Piero also mentioned about God blowing His spirit. This one example: فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ السَّاجِدِينَ. God, before creation of Adam informed the angels about his plan. He prepared them. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I complete the creation of Adam and blow into him from my spirit, then you must prostrate before Adam. Prostration, you know, to sajjad. So it was a sign of acknowledging greatness of Adam, who is going to be the vicegerent of God on the earth. So, this concept is mentioned in other verses. God says, I am blowing into him from my spirit. And our understanding is that it's not only Adam, all human beings have such a, a great a spirit that God attributes to himself. God doesn't have a spirit in the sense that it's part of him or, you know, something that, you know, is separated from him. But in Arabic we say this is al-idhafatu uh, tashrifiyya. In order to honor certain things, God attributes to himself. For example, God says there are days of God, ayyamullah, but God has no day or night. It's our days, but these are godly days. God says days of God. Or, for example, we say places of worship are houses of God. God doesn't have house. But we say this is house of God. Or, you know, Kaaba, Mecca, we say it's house of God. Human spirit is so important that although our body is also created by God, but he says human spirit is my spirit. And he said, Nafakhtu fihem and ruhi. Because ruh, as uh, Pierre also mentioned in Hebrew, so in Arabic and you know, Hebrew they are very uh, similar. Ruh and rih come from the same root. Rih means wind. And ruh means a spirit. And God says, blowing this spirit. So it's a kind of giving some. Uh, you know, like air to make it life, alive. So, this is one case that is repeated several times. And it is very important for us about Holy Spirit. I will come back to this point. But then we have also about Lady Mary. So here, God blew his spirit into Adam. But we have another case, God blowing his spirit to Mary. After Mary already being a human being, you know, so she has her own spirit. But it's a new spirit that God is blowing into Mary. So for example, if we go to uh, Ambiya 91. وَالَّتِي أَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَّفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا Referring to Lady Mary and her chastity. Uh, then, because we believe that she was virgin, she was not married. God says, we 
belonging to Mary from our spirit. And we made her and her son a sign for in rational inhabitants of the world. So this rule that God is blowing into Mary is Jesus. And therefore we call Jesus Ruhullah, Spirit of God. Also in Surah Tahrim, verse 12, we have the same concept. Mary, the son of Imran, who protected her chastity and we blew into her warm our spirit. So God again says about the spirit. And also in Surat Nisa verse 171. إِنَّمَا الْمَسِيحِ إِسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَكَلِمَتُهُ أَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرْيَمْ Jesus, the son of Mary, is a messenger of God and a word of God. This is a very important concept. Another time we have to discuss. According to Quran, Jesus is a word of God. What does the word mean? Of course, in Christianity also we have this. So, a word of God that God alqaha ila Maria. In the previous two verses was blowing. Here is projecting. You know, alqa. God projected, injected this spirit to Mary. So. Jesus was not uh, coming out of the body of Mary. Jesus was given to Mary. It's different from other children. Other children, especially according to uh, you know, Mullah Sadra, says that our human spirit is a result of substantial motion of the body. And at a certain point, the spirit is created. But in the case of Jesus, the spirit is given to Mary, and the term is Alpha. This is very important because later, we, when we talk about Holy Spirit, also we have this term Yulqi. Alqa Yulqi means to project, to you know, make someone meet something. Uh, so this is the meaning of Alpha. So this is the second case about God giving some spirit. Then. We go to the cases that here we don't have Holy Spirit, but we have something similar. So if we can go to Surah al -Qatra. chapter 97, verse 4. This is uh, the night of power, the night of measure. You know, in the month of Ramadan, there is a night that uh, Muslims try to keep awake, and that's the night that the Quran was revealed, the night that our affairs for the next 12 months will be decided. So this is a very important night, uh, which is considered to be better than 1,000 months in which there is no night of God. It's a very powerful night. So describing that night, which is the night of peace also, and the night of blessing, God says, Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi izn rabbihim min kulla aam. Again, we have a ruh. But this a ruh is not the spirit which was given to Adam, is not the spirit which was given to Mary, which is Jesus. This is another creation. All the angels and the spirit descend in that night with the permission of the Lord and they will bring all the commands or affairs of God down. Many Muslims, they say this Ar-Ruh is Gabriel. They say this is the Archangel Gabriel. And the reason Ar-Ruh is mentioned specifically 
is for emphasis. Okay? They say, you know, ذكر الخاص بعد العام. So, something is mentioned generally and then specifically. But according to some hadith that we have from imams, from you know, Shia imams, they say this is not Gabriel. Gabriel comes, but Gabriel is included in Al Malaika. They say this is greater than Gabriel. This spirit is something, is a creation of God, but greater than Gabriel. So we have evidence to think that this is Holy Spirit. Although it's not mentioned Ruh al Qudus, but it's with Aleph and Lam, which in Arabic shows that something is known. So when the angels come, the Holy Spirit also comes. But here doesn't specify what type of arrangement is there. Do they just come together or there is a kind of order? Okay? Another verse is Surah Al Ma'arij, verse 4. It is the other way around. Now it's about ascension of the angels and the spirit. The angels and the spirit rise, ascend to God. So, because basically they belong to the higher realm, they can come to us to bless us, but they can also go back. So you see again the same combination. Al Malaikatu wa Ruh. Okay? But when you go to Surat An Naba, verse 38, we have Yawma Yaqumu Ruh wa Malaika. Safa. The day that the spirit and angels will stand in a row. Okay? You know, like, for example, when there is a commander and then all the people who are under him, after him. Here, the spirit is brought first. And then the angels. Because as we said, this is greater than all the angels and even Gabriel. Then, we have if you go to Surah Al-Qafir 40, chapter 40, verse 15. We are, I hope uh, it's not tiring you because it's very important discussion and I am trying myself to benefit from your you know, hearts and unity. So. Fifteen of Surah Al-Qafir. Rafi al Darajat. Yes. Yeah. That's it. This is very important. Rafi al Darajat. God is the one who raises the ranks. Okay? He decides the ranks. Zul Arsh. He's the possessor of the throne. Yul you remember we said Jesus Kalimatun al So sometimes God says sends down, sometimes he says he projects. Here God says he projects, he sends the spirit which is from his arm. You remember we said Rabbi. So this spirit is sent with God to whom? This is very important. Our uh, Shia tradition emphasizes on the fact what, that when the spirit and the angels come in the night of Kaf, they come to the uh, vice of God who lives among human beings. 
And our Imams say, you know, if someone doesn't believe in an uh, infallible human being in every age and era, ask them, where do the angels and the spirit come? They don't go to any airport or mountain or plane. The angels come and the meeting point is where? In the spirit of the best person of that time who represents us in front of God. So the wise student of God on the earth, because we believe in every age, there must be one wise student of God on the earth. The angels come, the spirit come to man yasha'u min ibadi, the one that God is pleased with. So the servant of God that God is pleased with is the one who receives the angels and the spirits. Okay? So it's very important. And this happens in every year in the night of God, but also on other occasions. In the night of God is very important because all our destiny for the next 12 months will be planned and decided. The other verse is Surat Nah, chapter 16, verse 2. This ayah takes us one point further. Yunazzalul malaikata birruh min amrahi ala man yasha'u min ibadi. We have similar things, but something new here. What is similar is that God sends down the angels and the spirit. What is similar is that the spirit is from command or affair of God. What is common is that they come to the person that God is pleased with. But what is new here? He says he sends the angels with the spirit. So the spirit is the leader. The spirit is the one who is able to finish this process. So it seems like angels are giving company to the spirit. But the one who is doing actually the job is the spirit. So this Holy Spirit is so important that when God sends him down, he sends with the angels to come accompany. Of course, they, it's not formality. The coming of angels will, you know, bless and you know, honor and illuminate. But the one who is the main figure is the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And then. Sometimes we have, this is the last verse uh, about this I want to quote. Uh, I think it's Surah Fussilat, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ سُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ Okay, why I choose this verse? Because here there is the uh, angel but no spirit. Mm -hmm. Those who say our Lord is God and then they remain persistent. Yeah, because as we said yesterday, everything is to say, I believe in one God wholeheartedly. So our life is to say our Lord is God and then remain loyal to it and persistent. So the Quran says, those who say our Lord is God and remain persistent, angels come down to them. And they tell them, La takhafu wa la tahzan. Don't fear. Don't grieve. You know, as believers, we have lots of worries, lots of fears about opportunities we have missed, about you know future, how I'm going to be, etc. And receive the good news of heaven that you were promised. But my understanding is this. Although the angels come and give this message, but they may not understand. Because there is no 
guarantee that we hear what the angels say. Sometimes we hear what the angels say, like when they spoke to Abraham and his wife, like when they spoke to Mary. But many believers, they don't hear. The angels say, don't worry, but they don't hear. <laughs> this is our problem. Yes, you worry. Angels are telling us, you know, don't worry. There is no reason to worry. God is, you know, pleased with you. You are going to be to heaven. Maybe they feel something positive, but they don't hear the message. Therefore, they keep worrying. Why? Because Holy Spirit is not here. Because it's just angels. If angels come with the Spirit, then they will come and they will change. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who has the power. His descent is not, you know, uh, coming without finishing something, without completing something, without bringing light and, you know, power and hope and, you know, all these things. Here there is not the Holy Spirit. So, for some people, angels come and the Holy Spirit. For some people, just angels come. Angels are very available, thanks to God. Even, you know, we have many hadiths that if you seek knowledge sincerely, angels will spread their wings under your feet. So, angels are very much around us. But to have the spirit is not very, you know, common. And if the spirit comes, it makes a big difference. So, just yesterday and today, this idea came to my mind when I was sharing with Piero, that it seems, as still I have to work, uh, you know, but it came to my mind, and I think we have good evidence, but I have to think still. It seems that the angels, because they are different creatures of God, mm -hmm. and they are immaterial, they can come to us, but they cannot get very close to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they can surround us, mm -hmm. but they cannot enter into us. You know, they cannot have very intimate relation with us, because they are separate creatures. But it seems the spirit is different. Because God has given us a spirit, his spirit, Ruh, yeah? Then the Holy Spirit has more affinity with us. I'm not saying he enters into us, but he can, you know, get as close as possible to us. Yeah. And therefore, when he comes with the angels, I think angels just surround, but he connects to our hearts. Holy Spirit. So this is, I think, very important. And this is another dimension of God's love for human beings. Sorry. That he has already created us in the way that we can always connect with his highest of, you know, creatures, with the, even with the Holy Spirit. We are not a stranger to the Holy Spirit. Although you may not have experienced him, but we are not strangers because we have God's spirit here. It's just a matter of how we, you know, nourish that spirit. So this is what, you know, I wanted to share. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.